Hi, this is Ron Dorn, and I'd like to explain to you how to do Hawaii Lab Stage B question number five about the tree line elevations. I'm going to go to screen sharing and then shift to a full screen PowerPoint where I can explain the question and a bit about the background. Um, biogeography is an important part of physical geography. And an important part of biogeography is why are there tree lines? Most of people taking this class experience tree lines in the conterminous United States, where the tree line is usually limited by temperature. As you go up a mountain slope, say in Colorado or in California or in Washington state, you get to the point in which it's just too cold and it's too windy and there's a line at which trees can no longer grow. In other places, like in some mountains back east in Appalachia, the tree line might be defined by it being too windy. In Hawaii, it's a very different reason for the tree line. So there's a bunch of temperature, precipitation, and other factors that influence the biotic distribution. This question focuses on the tree line and its relationship to precipitation. In particular, we're focusing on the Big Island of Hawaii, and you're looking at a Landsat image from NASA of the Mauna Loa volcano, and you can almost draw a line where there's a rainforest below the tree line and that there's desert above the tree line. And what controls the upper tree line is the amount of precipitation, in particular, the trade wind inversion. Air is descending in the latitude of Hawaii and the descending air is extremely dry. So at about 2,200 meters, typically, generally, but it waves up and down, and that's what you're going to be measuring, is where you find the trade wind inversion, and that sometimes the tree lines need even more precipitation than what you find at the trade wind inversion. So most of the tree lines are actually below the trade wind inversion. In this question, you're given four locations and your or five locations excuse me and you're going to go to these different locations with the goal of being a scientist you're going to decide what the tree line is in hawaii and what the precipitation is that influences the tree line so you're going to go to different locations and you're going to determine the tree line then determine the mean annual precipitation of the tree line in millimeters then you're going to jump above that 500 meters and look at the precipitation 500 meters above the tree line and answering a two-part question. What's the mean and the range for the trade wind inversion tree line that you measured? And then above it, how did the precipitation then decline above the tree line? So this is actually what scientists do to compare the theory to what, the, what you actually measure with real data. The trick of this question and the problem that students, and students encounter is not the precision, not identifying the wrong location for the tree line, but it's simply not reading the instructions. The instructions will plop you somewhere below the tree line and that you need to walk up to the tree line. So for example, the upper images are where the question indicated for one of the locations for you to go, a starting location, and then you have to use your judgment for where you find the tree line. So you're simply walking the avatar uphill and you're noting the elevation of the tree line and the precipitation at that tree line. And you're getting it from the game environment. Another example is below where you comparing the precipitation at the tree line and then going above the tree line. You got to walk up 500 meters and you have to pay attention to the elevation. And then you look at the precipitation values. So in the end, please don't obsess about being exactly in the right place. We know that where you are going to plop the avatar is a judgment call, and that's what's involved in science. But by looking at five different locations, you're going to do an average, and you'll get the closest answer. So here's another example of what you're going to do. You get plopped at a lower location. You walk up to the tree line. You make your measurements in rainfall and elevation. Then you go above the tree line, and you do the same thing. I 
hope that this presentation was helpful and that it makes it a little bit more efficient and you understand that this is science you're doing using real data from the satellites. I hope you have fun.